All right, hi everyone. So we're back in the dome. Hey, I'm sitting here with the CGXL, and uh, today we're going to have a look at balancing. Uh, now, one of the things that we normally do with balancing is obviously we release the clutches, and then we just play with the uh, the weight positions until we feel that the um, the balance is is pretty good, and everything just sits where it should do. Uh, this one's got a slight. There we go, it's not too bad there, but um, one of the issues that I've noticed on both the CGXL and the CGX is that the mechanism up here uh, can be quite stiff and in which case you know the balance can still be quite a bit out and uh, you would never know because the, uh, the telescope will quite happily uh, sit where it wants to. Uh, so what today we're going to do, what we're going to do today is take a look at balancing it uh, electronically and to do that I've got myself uh, one of these uh, clamp on meters so the, the clamp meter uh, it basically monitors the power uh, the current draw on the motors as you're driving the scope and obviously if uh, the unit uh, your sorry if your mount is balanced then uh, the telescope current draw uh, or the mount current draw should be the both the same in uh, or the same in both directions. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. All right, so here's the meter, uh, clamp on meter. Uh, so unlike a normal uh, current meter that you'd put in the circuit, this one uh, uses inductive uh, coupling to uh, measure the current. Uh, now you get these in different types, uh, DC and AC. Uh, so of course we're going to be using the DC cable, uh, so you need uh, a DC uh, meter. And uh, this one is the B-Side ACM91, and uh, there's lots of them on Amazon, uh, different types, different brands. Uh, but I went for this one because the specification clearly stated it did uh, low milliamps, uh, and it has actually got a, a microamp uh, selection uh, on the, the mode switch so hopefully we should get uh, some more accuracy uh, with this meter all going well so as I said it clamps around the core of the meter so the first thing we're going to have to do is actually separate the cores uh, on the DC power cable coming in uh, we need to split them uh, to get access to just a single core so just very carefully using a craft knife I'm going to slice between the cores and open up the cable without damaging the insulation hopefully so that I can get access just to a single one uh, of the cores so it doesn't matter which core you go on to the current should be the same okay so what I've done is I've uh, got the clamp meter in place I've zeroed it and I've slewed the mount right over 90 degrees and what I'm going to do now is continue to slew the mount right over the full 180 degrees and monitor what the uh, the current does and then I'm going to repeat it going back the other way and obviously if the mount is balanced then the uh, it should be the same approximately uh, in the same direction so as I'm going to slew over I can see here it's drawing 0.32 amps I continue to monitor it it's dropped to 0.3 not 0.29 0.3 it comes over the top not 0.28 now it's starting to increase so it's not to not 0.85 amps now not 0.85 not 0.75 and it's starting to drop off a little bit so it's around about 0 0.75 coming over the other way so there's a big difference uh, in the amps there so now I'll just slew it back the other way we're doing 0.9 
still do 0.9 and it's dropped down there to 0.32 as it's gone over the top so it's telling me that uh, the, the mount isn't balanced okay so what I've done is I've moved the counterweight uh, this bottom one approximately an inch an inch and a half down and we're just going to repeat the slewing process over the top and over the other side and back again and just monitor what the uh, the current does this time. So the increase this time has gone up to 0.4 coming up where it was 0.3 previously. It's 0.36. And it's 0.3 as it's coming over the top. And this time it's up to 0 0.8, 0 0.85, so it's not quite drawing as much current on this side now. So 0 0.8 roughly uh, this time. So again. I'm going to repeat the process and uh, keep doing that until we get a balance. Alright, so after playing around with the counterweights and monitoring the current as it passes uh, the peak, so basically between here and sorry, here, uh, we, I'm now getting the scope appears to be pretty well balanced uh, on the RA, RA. So if I close the clutches and I monitor the current, as it passes through the, the peaks it's about 1.15 amps now uh, in both directions so it's pretty good uh, balance there give or take a few uh, milliamps so the next thing I'm going to do is repeat the process uh, for the deck and uh, I'll get on with that now. Alright so with the RA high it's sitting horizontal and moving the, the deck up and down I'm getting a variance of around 1.12 amps to uh, 1.5 amps so the scope is currently sitting uh, a little bit front heavy uh, so I just need to pull it back a fraction and uh, try it again. Alright, so what I've done is I've played around with the, the position of the, the OTA uh, on the saddle uh, and just moved it fractionally 2 or 3 millimetres uh, in either direction and just monitored the current and now uh, when I rotate uh, the scope I'm getting a variance of around about 0.5 uh, sorry, 0.75 to, to 0.8 uh, in either direction so it's uh, it's pretty well balanced there and again you could just fine tune it and this is where uh, little um, additional weights uh, would help to, to fine tune it rather than uh, trying to slide uh, the OTA up and down all the time. But nevertheless uh, that's how we can uh, balance a telescope using a clamp on a DC meter. So on that note I shall leave you to the next one. I shall return the scope to the home position it wants to work and uh, I shall see you in the next one thanks for watching take care clear skies